Mark Cavendish has been making headlines for over a decade. The fastest man on two wheels has been accumulating race wins and records and attracting attention from the moment he turned pro in 2005. InCycle met up with the Manx Missile in the Middle East at the inaugural Dubai Tour and found him in optimistic mood. I'm incredibly excited for this season. You know, Mega Farm, a quick step invested in me last year. Um, we had the horsepower there, but we are just missing that something at the end, you know, and uh, we've got probably the two best guys in the world for that at the same time, with Mark Wrencher and now Sandra Pataki. 2013 wasn't short of wins, 20 to be exact, but by Cavendish's exalted standards, it was a haul that some regarded with relative disappointment. Changes had to be made. The building programme that began when Cavendish joined Omega Pharma at the start of last season has continued. The return of Renshaw, Cavs' lead-out man at HTC, when the partnership powered to 67 wins in four seasons, plus the addition of 40-year-old Pitaki, 53 times a winner at Grand Tours, has given Cavendish arguably the finest lead-out in the sport. Those two guys are the guys whose instincts I can trust over mine even, you know, so it makes my job a lot easier, you know, I don't have the mental stress of thinking where I'm going. I can follow them and know I'll be in the right position at the right time. And then before them, we've probably got the biggest, biggest horsepower group in the world, you know, we've got Tony Marsh in the World Time Trial Champion, Tom Bone and Classic Specialist. I'm incredibly excited. I'm sat here, uh, like, I think the, the the hardest thing is going to be able to rein that horsepower in, you know, and leave me some energy left for the sprint. It can take up to two years to dial in a lead-out train, making the team's achievements at last year's Giro d'Italia all the more noteworthy. The tone was set right from day one in Naples. Cavendish is the leader of the Giro! The team set about winning every possible sprint finish in one of the harshest Giros in recent years. And you've got to be a very, very, very good sprinter to beat Mark Cavendish. The team's spirit was encapsulated during stage 13 to Kerasco when the group suffered and won together. I think it's a common misconception that I can't climb. The fact of the matter is, if there's a hill that I'm not going to win on, there's no point being one minute behind when I can be 40 minutes behind. You know, I, I can climb. I'm not a bad bike rider, to be fair, you know, and... Uh, that was one of those moments, you know, I have to get stuck in. I need the whole team around me, but the te team stayed around me in a bubble, protecting me from the wind and just giving me morale on the climb, you know. And we got over, we got to the finish and, uh, and I won. Oh, he's beaten everybody, Cavendish. They worked so hard for that. So I was spent, but uh, yeah, it's one of my most memorable victories. The guys rode with the hearts. More than the legs, they rode with the hearts. They didn't give up, they, they just gave everything. And, that was a beautiful win, a team that just rode and rode and rode, and for one cause, and it worked out, you know. Victory on the final stage to Brescia made it five stage wins in total and gave Cavendish the points classification crown, as he became only the fifth rider in history to win the sprint title in each of the three Grand Tours. Every champion has challenges, and Omega Pharma's sprinting super team is a response in part to that threat. Marcel Kittel took four of his wins at the Tour de France last season, whilst Cav, recovering from fatigue and illness, managed two. Of the current generation of sprinters, it's the 25-year-old German who appears best placed to challenge the Maxman supremacy. Argo Shimano were incredibly strong at, at the Tour last year. We were strong. It's just they were pretty exceptional, and Marcel was as well. Their duel will be a season-long highlight. Who will wear the yellow jersey after the Tour de France's opening stage will be another. For Cavendish, it's a chance to realise one of his few unfulfilled ambitions. Tour de France is starting in the UK. It's something I couldn't have dreamed about as a kid, you know. To have three stages this year, it, it, it makes me buzz. It gives me goosebumps, especially the first stage, finishing my mother's hometown in Harrogate. I've never been so, so excited about about one day of the year before in my life. Mark Cavendish's dominance has lasted the best part of a decade, but despite all the accolades and achievements, his desire to keep on winning burns as brightly as ever. I've never looked back on what I've done, even before I was cycling, you know. When I achieved something, I set a goal, I wanted to achieve it. The day after I, 
I achieved it, I set a new goal, you know. That, that's always how I was and uh, how I continue to be, you know. Um, I always wanted to be the best, that was it. You know, the reason to change now, like, I, I want to do well because I want my, my family to be proud of me. I want my daughter to grow up looking at her dad doing these things, like. So the motivations have changed, but uh, I still want to win.